boom so you're at ic 109 podcast if i keep telling stories about ic 109 and how i saw 109 then i'm not growing today was a day of growth i didn't see 109 today i didn't that's not a failure no that's stepping outside of the the cipher the cipher is a circle ciphers are good circles are good routines are necessary the thing about it though i watched some tiktok video or youtube video or something and it was about a cipher it was about the ants and a cipher army ants in particular and these army ants if something goes wrong for the army ants their chemical scent that they follow um how do i describe this let me try again um so ants will follow other ants and the ant that has found a source of food will emit a f- uh I want to say pheromone, but I think pheromones are for humans. Um, A fragrance, um, a chemical smell that the other ants can pick up on. A scent, chemical scent. And so the other ants will follow that scent until they reach the food source themselves. But sometimes that ant that is leading, they'll get confused. They'll get turned around and then they will go and you know make circles and not get anywhere they'll just run around in circles and so this circle that is where the scent will remain causing all of the other ants to just follow but also um follow the path of that circle so the circle is will be it'll be a large circle and everyone will all of the ants will just go around and around and around and i guess they as the the video stated the ants will continue to go around until they die fascinating reality because when you look at social media wait a minute i think what comes to mind when i when i see that circle uh with the ants um is the idea of being inside of a an echo chamber being inside an echo chamber is 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 analogous is uh synonymous it's the same thing as um being caught in that loop that the uh the answer in because in an echo chamber only one idea your ideas excuse me you say something and then the echo chamber just reverberates and returns exactly what you said you know you know when when you're trying to develop your ideas you you certainly don't want to be inside an echo chamber that doesn't help you to develop your ideals if you say hey trump is the right man to be the president and everyone just says yeah 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 well that how does that help you know you need to argue your point you need to develop your argument you need to learn to develop your argument you have to you have to confront the what naysayers the the your opposition and in doing so, you you can develop your arguments and they'll become stronger. You'll become more persuasive. So <clears throat> being inside an echo chamber is not where you want to be because there's no development. Basically, that's an echo chamber, I guess, is where, you know, ideas go to die. Um, the same thing with that circle. With, for those uh, ants the ants die eventually being stuck in that circle 
And the same thing goes for us, humanity, human beings. We don't want to be stuck in circles, you know, <clears throat> the vicious cycle as it's called. We don't want to be stuck in those. We want to get out and we want to grow. And so I found myself being in a cycle. I mean, to be fair to myself, I always felt as if I was practicing, you know, the telling, the retelling of my story. Um, every time I would go back and, and, and tell the story over and over again, that was just practice. But also, uh, I was able to document those uh, those stories and I can go back and li re-listen to them, you know, for those details. But anyhow, today was not a 109 day because I did not see 109. Um, and what I did is I went to, let me see, how did this happen? I was... Saturday, free time. I needed to figure out what to do. I was searching Facebook and I saw a friend's post, Caroline Kim. And Caroline Kim is of Korean descent. And so she posted, um, you know, an article in the Los Angeles Times that stated that a restaurant in Koreatown was closing after being open for like 40 years so the one thing i mean businesses come and go all the time but this particular business caught my attention caught my eye because they serve a particular dish that i did not know where to go to eat it in los angeles all right let me say that again they serve this particular dish that i ate in korea but I hadn't found in Los Angeles. I mean, I really didn't go and look for that dish. You know, I just figured, you know, if 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 a restaurant in Los Angeles had it, they should probably. I mean, I guess it, it should have just been easier for me to find, period. That's what I want to say. It just should have been easier. They should have had a sign on the outside saying they serve this dish. But that's not how they advertise themselves. They advertise themselves by like the, the place is called the dragon so the dragon doesn't tell you much about what is inside what they serve in the restaurant and this one particular dish that you know i enjoy when i was in korea i did not know that they served it there so anyway caroline's uh, post on facebook you know i saw it and then i was like you know what um, they serve that one dish that I had in Korea and I've been eating that dish recently in Los Angeles and here's how I've eaten it in Los Angeles. So I, I recently went to the 99 rent 99 ranch market. I think it's off of uh, Artesia somewhere near Torrance between Torrance Carson and Gardena or something like that. And I went into the 99 ranch market and I found the the dish it's called jajangmyeon it's also called um black noodles it's colloquially known as black noodles right but jajangmyeon is the name so jajangmyeon is what they call it in korea but it's also a chinese it's a korean dish that is trying to be chinese i think or is it a chinese dish that was no, I mean, I see, I don't know the history about this dish, but um, I do know his, the history about, I think, a, another dish that was actually made in Los Angeles. And it's a dish that is Korean, but it was Korean American. And then it became popular in Korea. Imagine that, you know, the way that things happen. Anyhow, anyhow. So um, this dish is jajangmyeon. It's the black noodles. And I went to the 99 Ranch Market a few weeks ago and I bought a packet, like a ramen packet of the black noodles. And um, over the course of eating the black noodles, you know, day in and day out, over the course of like four days, because in the packet, in, in the bag, there were four packets of uh, these noodles. 
every time I ate them, I was just disappointed. And like, I was saying to myself, why am I, I've had better, like, why would I eat this garbage, period? <laughs> like, why? why, why am I doing this to myself? It wasn't so much that I, I really wanted these noodles or it was just that I knew, I remembered those noodles. I was willing to give the, give this product a try. I bought them, I cooked them. And then when I ate them, I was disappointed. <laughs> I was like, this is just terrible. So when I saw Caroline's post about the noodles, I said, hey, I've, I've eaten those noodles here in Los Angeles and they were pretty bad. I said to myself, I wonder how the noodles are at this restaurant. That was all today. I saw the post today and I was like, I've got to go to that restaurant. So the thing about it is that particular restaurant is closing its doors forever and they're closing it tomorrow. And so today when I saw that post, I was in luck because I had today and I also have tomorrow to go before the, you know, the last, before it's over, before they close their doors forever. So it was serendipitous. It was beautiful. It was a, it was destiny. It was a miracle that I found this article a day before this place closes. Like, oh my gosh. Now, the other thing about this restaurant is, yes, it's been open for 40 years and basically we drove past it my mom and dad would drive me to school and we drove past this restaurant if not for 40 years more like uh the the, be the better part of 10 years because i went to uh school basically in koreatown for about 10 years and we were always driven to school so yeah we would pass that restaurant and I would see that sign. I would see the, the mask. There's a mask on that, uh, that design, the design of the, the sign on the outside is a mask. Of course, I don't have any understanding or any cultural understanding. You know, I don't have I, looking at that mask. I can't tell you what it means. I can't tell you anything about it, but I've seen that mask for 40 years basically you know just passing by and just seeing and I never went inside until I discovered until I read this article that said hey this is what's going on inside and now I'm like oh well I need to go check that out and they gave me some ideas today's adventure gave me some ideas like you need to spend more time in Koreatown you need to step your korean up you got to tap back into your korean like people I, I i heard something i think there was an article i read maybe there was a video and it said that if you come to los angeles you must go to koreatown and i was like i was blown away by this idea like really what koreatown is all that i i've been to koreatown i've spent some time in koreatown but i never really thought that it was that much of a lure um i certainly desire to be in koreatown because i studied taekwondo and that was a part of it but um i guess in los angeles I can't I can't even answer that question like why why you know, I, why is Korea well Koreatown is okay that article that I was referencing I think that article mentioned you know Koreatown breaks the rules uh especially for bars and alcohol like if you go to Koreatown no if you're in Los Angeles bars are supposed to close I, I believe at two in the morning you know establishments that that sell alcohol at two but in Koreatown, there are secret, there are secret clandestined bars where you can go to and you can drink past two o'clock. And I actually went to one of those. I was with Korean friends. This was like 2012, 13 or 14. I don't know what, it, what year it was. And we were there. And that was a bizarre experience. Of course, you don't want to 
get into the vices you know you don't want to you know drink your life away but just the idea that hey you can hang out you know and have a good time in koreatown when other bars or other places are closed well you know that's pretty cool and so that's one of the reasons that article you know mentioned koreatown is one of those places to hang out because koreatown breaks those rules like that um yeah there are some other things that koreatown you know does and you know how the rules are broken um i'm pretty sure they have uh well i know i read about the brothels that are basically the karaoke bars that are um are, what is it they're brothels masquerading as karaoke bars there was one story about that dome me dome help help is what you know the girls are called uh lonely men go into these karaoke bars women accompany will uh, men will pay for a woman to accompany them they will bring them beer and alcohol they will drink they will uh the girls will dance and entertain um the men sing songs with him and then expect him to pay for a motel room where they will leave and have sex so that goes down um that goes down in korea so they just brought that over here to america where that that's what happens there um so there's a lot i guess there's a lot of uh, there are a few reasons to go to koreatown but then come to think of it koreatown is where you can find spas quite a number of spas and saunas you know i've been to the grand spa I believe it's on uh, 6th Street, not far from uh, my old school, across the street from my old school, actually. And um, I like that one. Then there's like the Wii, the Wii Spa, and then there's plenty other Olympic Spa and some other places that I haven't been. But like, yeah, Koreatown is pretty popping. It's own. It, it, they got it going on over there from uh, the spas to the golf courses uh i mean the uh the driving range right the video golf driving range like the koreans got it going on yeah and it's such a big area it's a large swath of the city that should absolutely be visited um it's a huge playground and then the food the food is excellent so i'm basically saying i'm so glad i i saw caroline's post because <sighs> my wife and i are gonna have to go over there like here's another you know thing about it uh, a few days ago maybe a week or so now my wife my wife my mother-in-law and my stepdaughter they were all together and they went to koreatown they had a craving for some korean food on that same day i made my move to the japanese market in torrent so we were our wires got switched right I wasn't thinking about Koreatown. I was thinking more about, you know, Japanese, you know, food or what have you. I love Japanese food culture and, uh, you know, traveling to Japan. Oh, I love it. But I'm actually look, thinking about Korea now, you know, after Caroline's post. But also, you know, my wife loves Korean food as well. So I have another reason, you know, to go over there. We should go over there and explore more of Koreatown. That's what I'm saying that's what needs to happen so today was a, a day of growth because i didn't see 10 9 i did something that i've never done before i got outside my comfort zone i i discovered something um something that's really good really really nice the fact that hey jajangmyeon is available in los angeles and it's good it's good oh so there are a couple of ways oh yeah yeah this reminds me this reminds me of the jajangmyeon i had when i was in um in in korea so there was this chinese restaurant not far from the university where i worked the place the uh the the place is owned by a boxer famous you know maybe a olympic olympic olympian um korean or olympian and um they it's a really elegant um place I noticed the way that they prepare or rather present their jajangmyeon. 
So if you get the the typical jajangmyeon with the pork in it, well, they'll they'll pour the sauce over the noodles and you just dig in. Well, if you get the seafood jajangmyeon, well, they will put the sauce in a in a in a sauce bowl in a in a bowl and then the noodles they'll they'll give you in another bowl and then you have to combine them together you have to mix them on your own which is interesting so when i ordered my food today i ordered just you know regular jajangmyeon with the uh the pork and they just brought me a bowl with jajangmyeon sauce on top and it was like here eat it and i was a little I was a little upset for like a minute, for like a second. I was upset, like, hey, because I saw another couple at an, at the table in front of me, and they got the two bowls, right? And then I had to check my emotions. I had to check myself and say, hey, slow down, Larry. Remember when you were at that uh, Chinese restaurant in, in Korea? When you ordered the seafood jajangmyeon, that's when they brought you the two bowls. And then you mix them together. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got the regular stuff. So it's just a bowl. But the the special stuff comes with two bowls. So if I go back there tomorrow, then I'll have to order the um, the seafood jajangmyeon and get the two bowls. But I think I might order the jampong. Because in Korea, there are two dishes. You get the jajangmyeon, which is basically black noodles with the pork, you know. And then... Um, in the same establishment where you get the jajangmyeon, you can get jampong. I think the reason you can you can get these two dishes is because they're made with the same noodles. It's a different soup, different different types of um, dish dishes. So the jampong is a seafood. It's a red sauce seafood. Um, yeah, bowl. And then the jajangmyeon is a pork black sauce okay on top of noodles dish right there but the same types of noodles it's the same noodles in, in both dishes so i think that's why they're why they serve jampong and uh, jajangmyeon in the same restaurants so i've got some things to do i've got to go to korea town and hang out and enjoy my days and and then practice my korean and and meet some you know people and i think in los angeles but sadly, that restaurant is going to close. But they have many other restaurants. I mean, the business is booming. You dig? Um, all these years, all this time, the business has been booming, which is pretty awesome. And pretty fascinating, really, to think about. Like, wow, that's, that's different. That's how you learn about your city. Step outside the comfort zone. So no 10-9 today. Oh, I did see... When I turned the corner, I was trying to find parking and I, I turned and I was uh, just behind one of the buses, one of the city buses and the bus, the city bus uh, license plate read 108. It was 1088 something, something, something. 108. The time right now is 1008. The time right now is 1008. That's a 108, you know. I'm about to end this uh, podcast in a in a minute to stay within tradition. So at 10.09, I'm going to end the podcast because that will be 10.09. So I didn't see 10.09 today, but I'm making I'm, I'm bringing 10 calling 10.9 into this. But just because I but the but just because I didn't see 10.9 today doesn't mean anything. I don't have to force it. I don't have to really force it. I don't have to wait for 10 9 to, to show up on the, the cell phone for that to be the hour, for that to be the time when I end it. I'm just saying that you got to step outside that circle, that routine. You got to do things. You got to get outside your comfort zone or you could die if you stay there. All right. It's 10 09 p.m. on Saturday, January 27th. And, and this is IC 10 9. And we're out. Peace.